Once again, good morning and welcome to this Facebook live stream of St. Andrew's Grand Rapids and welcome to those of you who are watching us after the fact that when we post the video to YouTube. I thank you for watching in these unusual times and these weird circumstances, but we gather together now, we are gathered together virtually across uh, the internet and via this live stream. Uh, I've indicated before that if you would be willing to, please click the Google Docs, the Friendship Pad Google Docs form, fill that out just as we would on any other given Sunday. It's a prayer request form as well, so please consider that. And you please also consider broadening our reach here by creating a Facebook watch party by clicking watch party uh, below this live feed. March is the birth month of Johann Sebastian Bach, our most famous Lutheran composer and musician. And in honor of this, his birth and his life, the call to worship and the postlude are both his compositions. And we begin with a call to worship. Uh, the second stanza, the words to the second stanza will be projected as they are appropriate to this time of uncertainty. Uh, in this uncertain time, we want to be a source of comfort uh, to you, those of you who are gathering with us, uh, and these are uncertain times. Please know that your church, your church staff are holding all of us in prayer right now. Uh, I want to remind you that all in-person meetings, activities, uh, events, ministries have been suspended during this time until we get the all clear word. Having said that, uh, do call us at the church, at least for the f immediate future until we're told that differently. Uh, church office staff will be coming in. We're available for phone calls. We're available to respond to emails. Uh, we want to be uh, a communication hub for you and for all. Uh, of course, that might come to an end if our governor uh, issues a shelter-in-place order, but for now at least, uh, you can call us. But please do not stop by the church office. The church is locked. Uh, we don't want to be part of the problem, if you will. We want to be part of the solution uh, in this pandemic. So please adhere to that. Uh, turning to worship. Uh, rather than present a, a, an abbreviated version of our worship services, at least for now, we are going forward with our full worship service with what, one exception. Instead of celebrating communion, we're going to have a section called Thanksgiving for the Word. Uh, that's just been our choice right now. If we have to um, shelter at home, that will, of course, need to change as well. But we, again, we want this to be as familiar and as comfortable to you who have worship here on site uh, as possible. Church is important and church family is important. Kim, I want you to pan the camera over here today, as was scheduled, is Pack the Pew Sunday when we are uh, helping our local food shelf, the Second Harvest Food Shelf, uh, with their food drives. March is Minnesota Food Share Month, so we've been going forward with that. All of these groceries will be going to uh, Second Harvest Food Shelf. Uh, please also watch online for announcements of upcoming Thrive in Action Team events 
also to benefit our food shelf. We're in a time where I think this is going to be really, really important that we, we help those who, who perhaps don't have enough food in their own refrigerators and in their own pantries. Also up front, as Kim pans a little bit more perhaps, uh, we have uh, prayer shawls up. I mentioned this on Wednesday. Our, our prayer shawl ministry continues and they wanted to put these up as a reminder to all of us that we are people of prayer. We're holding each other other in prayer, that has not changed. That we can do uh, whether we're in person or not. Speaking of prayers, uh, a prayer concern. Please pray for the family and friends mourning the death of Beverly Kongsjord. A private funeral and burial has been planned, but please hold this family in your prayers. We continue now with our opening hymn, God, whose almighty word. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who is present, who gives life, who calls into existence things that do not exist. Amen. If you were to keep watch over sins, O Lord, who could stand? Yet with you there is forgiveness, and so we confess. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned away from you knowingly and unknowingly. We have wandered from your resurrection life. We have strayed from your love for all people. Turn us back to you, O God. Give us new hearts and right spirits that we may find what is pleasing to you and dwell in your house forever. Amen. Receive the good news. God turns to you in love. I will put my spirit in you and you shall live, says our God. 
All your sin is forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the free and abounding gift of God's grace for you. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for this holy house and for all who suffer, offer here their worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Together, let us pray. O oh God, discerner of hearts. You look beneath our outward appearance and see your image in each of us. Banish in us the blindness that prevents us from recognizing truth, so we may see the world through your eyes and with the compassion of Jesus Christ, who redeems us. Amen. So for those of you who might not know me, my name is Nikki, and I'm the Children, Youth, and Family Ministry Director here at St. Andrews, and I feel really lonely up here without my friends all gathered around, so I, I thought I'd bring some pictures. They, you know, don't do the kids actual justice because they are some seriously cute kids, but here are some of the kids that often come up and sit with me during this time. But I decided to go ahead and do this, and hopefully when you're at home maybe watching this, You'll recognize your picture, or you'll say, hey, I remember that girl, her name's Nikki, or something. And then you'll just listen along with us. So back when I was young, I used to love Sesame Street. Does anybody else like Sesame Street? And there was this one thing that they used to do, and it said, one of these things is not like the other. It was a game, and it would put different things on the screen, and you'd have to decide which one of these things didn't belong with the group. So we're going to do that. and. I'm going to have you at home tell me which one is not like the others. We all recognize what this probably is because we're having to use it a lot these days. Got some soap. Got a water bottle. Got some hand sanitizer. I bet you know what this is too. Got some baby wipes. Got some Kleenex. Got some dirt. And I've got some Lysol spray. I am not saying you should run out and buy this. I'm not marketing this item. But this is spray, disinfectant spray. So which one of those things do you think might not belong in this list? If you guessed the dirt, I think you're right. Dirt is what we're trying to get off of ourselves when we use these things. But today's gospel lesson talks about mud. It talks about dirt. And we all know what happens if we take a little bit of dirt and we add a little bit of water, we get a little bit of mud. And Jesus, in today's lesson, in today's story, he uses mud, but not for something that is icky, but he uses it for healing because that's how amazing Jesus is. He can even take something like mud and use it for good. And I asked my daughter, who I don't have to socially distance from since she is in my home, to come up and help me out here. See, in the story, <laughs> Jesus puts it in a guy's eye because he's blind. And he's like, 
here, I'm going to spit on the ground, and I'm going to make some mud. And I didn't actually spit. And um, I'm going to have you go rinse it off, and you're going to be able to see. And it actually happened. Now, I already have glasses, so I don't need to see very well. But just as an illustration point here, this is a one-time only chance, Miss Catherine. Just, just have, you know, it's not easy to find dirt in northern Minnesota at this time of year, so that's actually out of my plants. so cold. <laughs> so Jesus kind of just did this thing, and he, oh, oh, Th thank you, get you back later, and so Jesus did that thing, and this guy was able to see again, and it, it reminded me that mud and dirt is kind of like our sin, but we are able to take, because of Jesus, we are able to remember that our sin always goes away. I'm really dirty now, so I'm gonna have to go wash my hands really good for 20 seconds, and I will sing the ABCs as I do it, so I know that it's 20 seconds. You do that too. But let's pray first. Dear God, Dear God. Thank, you for helping us. thank you for helping us. Thank you for holding us. Thank you for, holding us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving us. And even during scary times, and even during scary times we, know you're with us. we know you're with us. Amen. Or as we say usually in church, we go, Amen.
Thank you, Eileen. Thank you, Jan. Today's reading is from the Book of John in the New Testament. I will be reading the entire ninth chapter of the Book of John, broken up by brief musical interludes. A reading from the Gospel of John, the ninth chapter. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man who was blind from birth. Jesus' disciples asked, Rabbi, who sinned so that he was born blind, the man or his parents? Jesus answered, neither he nor his parents. This happened so that God's mighty works might be displayed in him. When it's daytime, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. After Jesus said this, he spit on the ground, made mud with the saliva, and smeared the mud on the man's eyes. Jesus said to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam. This word means scent. So the man went away and washed. When he returned, he could see. The man's neighbors and those who used to see him when he was a beggar said, isn't this the man who used to sit and beg? Some said, yes, it is. Others said, no, it's someone who looks like him. But the man said, yes, it's me. So they asked him, how are you able to see? The man answered, the man called Jesus made mud, smeared it on my eyes and said, go to the pool of Siloam and wash. So I went and washed, and then I could see. They asked, where is this man? And he replied, I don't know. Then they led the man who had been born blind to the Pharisees. Now, Jesus had made the mud and smeared it on the man's eyes on a Sabbath day. So Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. The man told them, he put mud on my eyes. I washed and now I see. Some Pharisees said, this man isn't from God because he breaks the Sabbath law. Others said, how can a sinner do miraculous signs like these? So they were divided. Some of the Pharisees questioned the man who had been born blind again. What do you have to say about him since he healed your eyes? And the man replied, he is a prophet. The Jewish leaders didn't believe the man had been blind and received his sight until they called for his parents. The Jewish leaders asked them, is this your son? Are you saying he was born blind? How can he now see? His parents answered, we know he is our son. We know he was born blind, but we don't know how he sees and we don't know who healed his eyes. Ask him. He's old enough to speak for himself. His parents said this because they feared the Jewish authorities. This is because the Jewish authorities had already decided that whoever confessed Jesus to be the Christ would be expelled from the synagogue. That's why his parents said, he is old enough. Ask him. Therefore, they called a second time for the man who had been born blind and said to him, give glory to God. We know this man is a sinner. The man answered, I don't know whether he's a sinner. 
There's what I do know. I was blind, and now I see. They questioned him. What did he do to you? How did he heal your eyes? He replied, I already told you, and you didn't listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? They insulted him. You are his disciple, but we are Moses' disciples. We know that God spoke to Moses, but we don't know where this man is from. The man answered, this is incredible. You don't know where he's from, yet he healed my eyes. We know that God doesn't listen to sinners. God listens to anyone who is devout and does God's will. No one has ever heard of the healing of the eyes of someone born blind. If this man wasn't from God, he couldn't do this. They responded, you were born completely in sin. How is it that you dare to teach us? Then they expelled him. Jesus heard they had expelled the man born blind. Finding him, Jesus said, do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, who is he, sir? I want to believe in him. Jesus said, you have seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking to you. The man said, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped Jesus. Jesus said, I have come into the world to exercise judgment so that those who don't see can see, and those who see will become blind. Some Pharisees who were with him heard what he said and asked, surely we aren't blind, are we? Jesus said to them, if you were blind, you wouldn't have any sin. But now that you say, we see, your sin remains. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let your steadfast love come to us, O Lord. Save us as you promised. We will trust your word. Save us as we promised. You will trust your word. Our reading, our long reading this morning from John is all about seeing or not seeing. It's about physical blindness. It's also about spiritual blindness. It's about Jesus restoring the eyesight of a man born blind. And it's about revealing a lack of insight on behalf of others. Now, since we're talking about seeing, it's important to notice right at the get-go that Jesus saw the blind man. He didn't hurry by the man or ignore the man. He didn't see him as somehow unworthy. Jesus saw him. And what I want us to hear is that Jesus still does this. He sees us in whatever situation we might find ourselves in. And Jesus has time for us. He comes to us. He speaks to us, even if it may be that we don't seem to notice him, even if we have not been pursuing him. You see, Jesus is the one who sees. Jesus is the one who pursues, and he pursues us, whether we're worthy or unworthy, the religious, the irreligious, no matter what side of the tracks that we might live on. And I, for one, take comfort in that. Because from time to time, I find myself feeling unworthy, unlovable, not doing enough, not being spiritual enough. And I figure if I feel this way sometimes, 
It may be that some of you feel that way some of the times. But hear this, all of us. Jesus sees us. When we are hurting and when we are lonely and when we are alone and Jesus comes to us, when it seems like nobody else around us notices, even notices our pain or our discomfort or our dis-ease, and maybe you're feeling that right now, even when it may seem that no one else sees you or notices you, Jesus, full of love, sees you. He sees you, and he comes to you. He comes to heal you, and he comes to make you whole. He comes to fill you now with his presence. But the disciples didn't quite see that. At least that's what their question revealed. They asked, uh, Jesus, who sinned, this man here or his parents, that he was born blind? Behind that question was an assumption, was a belief that when bad things happen, it's because God is acting intentionally to punish someone for something they did, for some sin. In other words, God was responsible for the man's blindness and by extension, all the bad stuff that happens. People today think this too. I can't tell you how many times people have said to me in the midst of something, what did I do to deserve this? It happens when someone's sick or dying. Why is God doing this? It happens when there's a natural disaster. Why is God doing this? It happens when there's a pandemic like we're in right now. Why is God doing this? But Jesus refuted that kind of thinking when he answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned. Bad stuff happening is not about God zapping people. Sometimes, bad stuff just happens. Instead of answering the question, why Jesus? Jesus answers, but he answers another question that the disciples didn't ask. And I would say it's a question we need to ask too. The now what question. Or What's next question? Or what will God be up to now question? What will God do right now when we're in this mess or struggle or tragedy or pandemic? And Jesus' answer is this, whatever the this is, this is an opportunity for God's glory to be revealed. Jesus said, this is the time that I must do the works of him who sent me. And he healed the man and made him whole and gave him sight. He restored the man completely to community and gave him a purpose-filled life. And in so doing, Jesus gives us today some more insight into the nature of God. If Jesus is our picture of God, of who God is, and he is, we need to ask, is the God of Jesus Christ one who willingly inflicts harm, tragedy, or calamity among people? And I would say, quite emphatically, that the answer to that is no. Or is the God of Jesus Christ one who acts to heal, restore, comfort, and send? And I'd say to the, the answer to that one is a resounding yes. Jesus reveals the nature of God. Jesus reveals the glory of God, the goodness of God. And at times, he does it right in the midst of tragedy. Or perhaps in spite of calamity. He does it right in the midst of suffering. If we get caught up in the why question, I think we might quickly find ourselves confused or frustrated angry and discouraged, and we might not ever ask that next one, the, the what next question, or what might God do now? Or how might God use this to reveal to us God's glory, to give us greater sight and insight 
and to God's goodness and will. Jesus did the work of the one who sent him by spitting in the dirt, making mud. I love how Jesus does that. This is just a side note. This is bonus material, though. It's kind of like God in Genesis chapter 2 gets down and makes a mud man. We call him Adam, right? The, the mud man. He's playing in the mud. Well, Jesus kind of plays in the mud in this type of creation story, if you will, creation or recreation of sight. Anyways, he plays in the mud, <laughs> makes the mud, smears it on the man's eyes, and then directs the man to wash himself in the waters of the pool of Siloam. Now, there's a lot of things going on there, but one detail this morning that I want to share with you that I find absolutely fascinating. The word that we translate as spread or smeared is the Greek word for anointed. And you know what that Greek word anointed is? Christos. Christ. And if we want to take it literally, Jesus Christ's the man's eyes. And with Christed eyes, not only does he gain physical sight, but this man gains deep spiritual insight as well. Oh, I think that's way cool. He, deep insight as well. He went from calling Jesus in the course of the reading that Dick did for us. He went from calling Jesus a man to a prophet to, at the end, master. The eyes of his heart now opened step by step. Now, for him, it was pretty quick in this story, right? It was a day or two. For others, like for you and me and our loved ones and our acquaintances, for others today, it can happen. It might take longer than a day or two. It might be 20, 40, 60 years. But it can happen for you and for me as we're open to Jesus, even in the midst of struggle. What we need today, you and me, are Christed eyes. Because with Christed eyes, we'll be able to see as Jesus sees. With Christed eyes, we'll be able to have compassion as Jesus has compassion. With Christed eyes, we'll be able to have eyes focused not primarily on me. Oh, I'm focused so much on me. But with Christed eyes, my focus turns to others. With Christed eyes, eyes we will see and reach out to and do the works of God who sends not only Jesus but who sends us as Jesus to those who are lonely and alone in this time of physical distancing and when people are staying home. So let me ask you right now. Looking and perceiving with Christed eyes, what is the work of the one who sent you? Who might it be you can reach out to today and again and again this week with a phone call to check in? How you doing? Isn't this weird? Um, do you have any needs? Are you safe? Um, how can I pray for you? Did you know that our church is online now and you can like worship online or, oh, you don't know how to do that? Let me tell you how to do that. Who can you reach out to with Christed eyes and make a difference for? My friends, the hard reality in this text is that Jesus does not promise that our lives will be free from trouble. Even if he has touched us and healed us, even if we do have Christed eyes, even if we um, do follow Jesus, Jesus with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, that was never a promise. Look at the text even. The man who was healed by Jesus and could see again, he had a ton of problems. His parents didn't know what to do with him. The Pharisees, the religious leaders, didn't know what to do with him after he had been healed. No, Jesus does not promise 
that our life will be free from trouble. But he does promise that his grace will be sufficient. He does promise that nothing in all of creation will be able to separate us from his love. He promises that he will be with us. And he promises that he can bring good even out of the worst of situations, even if we can't see that right now. Our call is not only to try to see that and understand that, but our call is to be that. As, we're, as we see others wrestling with struggles and tragedy and suffering, will we be the presence of Jesus for them? Will we be Christ's hands and feet and make something good come from it? Will we respond to this pandemic not only with pat answers about why, but with action that works for the good because Jesus calls us to extend that goodness? May your eyes be open. Open. May our eyes be open and Christed so that we may see with ever deepening insight what God is able to do and wanting to do for us and through us right in the midst of tough times. Amen. We're going to sing Amazing Grace as we celebrate that which does sustain us.
please join together in confessing the Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Praying separately in our homes and together in the Spirit, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Each portion of the prayers ends in the words, Hear us, O God. Please respond, Your mercy is great. We pray for the church around the world. Strengthen all the baptized with the light of hope in you, despite an inability to gather in person for worship. Guide bishops and pastors, church staff, and congregation councils as they make decisions for their communities. At this time of distress, give preachers the courage and the wisdom to speak your word with mercy and might. As at the Annunciation, you sent an angel to bring good news to Mary, so send an angel now to the world with your gospel of peace and love. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the earth. Give your wisdom to humanity to care for the lands and the seas with all their living things. Provide rich soil for crops to grow. Bring rain to lands suffering drought. Protect hills and shorelines from damage caused by erosion. erosion. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the nations of the world. Give your peace to the nations of the world. Call a halt to all violence, terrorism, and warfare at this time and forever. Anoint us with your spirit of social justice that we join with Bishop and Martyr Oscar Romero to care for the poor. Empower heads of state and legislators to enact adequate and helpful policies for the health and welfare of their citizens. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray as together we are facing the coronavirus. Be present with those who have contracted the virus, those who are quarantined, those stranded away from home, those who have lost their employment, and those who are filled with fear. Console those whose futures are disrupted or seem empty. Support health professionals and medical researchers as they address the pandemic. We pray for Governor Walls and those working tirelessly in his administration and the Minnesota Department of Health, the Minnesota Department of Education, the Minnesota Department of Human Services. We pray for President Trump and his administration. Give them wisdom and perseverance. Comfort our distressed world. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all in need. Remembering the story of the man born blind, we pray for all who are blind or of low vision. Heal those who suffer from any anxiety or disease. Accompany all who today will die. Support physicians, nurses, therapists, home health aides, and all who tend to human bodies. Come quickly to all who seek your presence this day especially those whose names we lift to you now, either out loud or silently. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
Normally at this point in the worship service, we would be passing offering plates. Uh, I want to remind you that you can still give to support your congregation, those of you who are part of this family of faith. Uh, you can do so by going to our website, and on that homepage, you'll be able to click the Donate button. If you navigate a little bit further into our website under a Give tab at the top, you'll be able to sign up for Simply Giving. This is really a time that we can... Um, Plug Simply Giving, which is an automatic transfer of funds uh, from your account, your checking account, for example, to the church's accounts. It's a way of sustaining the ministry, not only in a time of pandemic and a time when we can't gather together, but very many of our people are already using Simply Giving as a way to do their first fruits giving, uh, giving uh, up front rather than from what's left over. And scripture calls us to, to, to give up front first fruits, and Scripture calls us to give joyfully and cheerfully as a way of, of supporting uh, the ministry of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I thank you for your continued giving and for your generosity. We continue now with the thanksgiving for the word. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for your word, for through your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. By your word, you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh. You speak to us and call us to be witnesses. Forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Send forth your spirit of truth, O God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith. Increase our hope and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus. Amen. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. The God of all grace bless you now and forever. Amen.
Thanks be to God. And before we stop broadcasting and recording, we will listen to the, the postlude. I almost said prelude because the postlude is called Prelude in C minor by J.S. Bach. Mm -hmm. 